stampers at Stampin Texas. I have got a fun cute uh, Christmas album I wanted to share with you. These are just little six by six albums that I created and I wanted to share with you how I put these together. This particular album I use the Candlelight Christmas Specialty Designer Paper and this one I use the Be of Good Cheer Paper and you can use any paper you have on hand but these are such cute fun books to make. Pretty simple actually. It may not look like it but really it is and each one of them is a, has its own little pocket with some ribbon on the top. There are six pages and I just wanted to share this with you. I did a class on this over the weekend, and I thought this is such a fun book, and it makes such a great gift. So what I'm going to do in part one, I'm going to show you the papers and the basics and everything you need to get started. And then in part two, we'll actually start assembling and putting everything together so you can see how it works. All right, so let's get started. The base of our book, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but you'll notice these mountains and valley folds. We are actually going to be using a piece of paper that is 12 by 24 inches. And this is a paper that Basil makes. I know it's kind of hard to get the whole thing in here, obviously, because it's so long. But I found this at a scrapbook store. So I'm thinking any scrapbook, your local scrapbook store should have this. It's a craft piece of paper from Basil, and it's 12 by 24. This is going to form the base of our book, and we're going to need our score tool. I love our score tool. And again, I'm going to try to cram all this here in the picture, so bear with me if I bonk my camera a little bit, because I just want to be able to show you. There we go. I'll scooch it like that. We want to be able to see the six-inch mark, because what we're going to do is we put one end of the paper in like this. Just leave the rest hanging off. And I'm going to use the thin part of my stylus, and I'm going to start scoring from the six-inch six mark every inch till I get to the middle of the paper. So that's six, seven, eight. I'm going to go all the way to the 12. Even if you can't see, you know what I'm doing. Kind of hard to do this on this weird angle, but it's working. There we go. All right, so I've got all these score lines. Starting at six, I went over to 12, and now I'm gonna flip my paper around, and I'm going to do the same thing. Start at six, and now I only have to go to the 11 inch mark. One, the neat thing is one of these sheets of paper will actually create two books. So it really is a good, good value. All right, so this is what it should look like. And can you see all, oh, there we go. See all the score marks all the way across? So I went in six inches, scored it, six inches, scored it. All right. Now let me move that score tool out of the way. I'm going to fold this in half. So now we are looking at a 12 by 12. Okay, I'm trying to get my edges lined up here. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually get our paper trimmer into view. And we're going to cut this in half right here so that the score marks create. That's where we're going to be folding our mountains and valley folds. And I'm using my tabletop cutter. If you have not ever used this cutter, oh my goodness, you would love it. All right, I'm trying to scooch all this in. See, I told you it was a tight space. There we go. Okay, so here's my six inch mark. It's not labeled, but I know that that very end of the black is the six inch mark. And this is the best thing about this cutter is that you actually press this little plastic down and it holds it in place. So now I've got my two pieces of paper that look like this. All right, so that is going to become the base of our book. 
And at this point, what I'm going to do is just start folding back and forth. And this is becoming... I'm sorry, I'm not doing a real good job holding it in the camera for you guys. I'm just holding it up in the air. Yeah, well, you know. But I think you get the idea of the back and forth. There we go. Now I'm pinching it. That's better. Oop. There. All right, now you get the idea of how the base of our book is going to work. So that is our book. Let me show you the other pieces you need. You might need to get a piece of paper to take notes on because the others, there's some measurements and things you'll want to jot down. So I'm going to move that aside for the moment. You are going to need two pieces that are cut to four and a fourth by six and this is going to form the front and the back cover like this. So front and back cover, two pieces, four and a fourth by six. This piece is a five by six piece and this is going to form our spine. It's going to wrap around just like this. So you'll need one five by six for the spine. You're also going to need six pieces that are cut six by 12. I have scored them and folded in half. These become the pages inside our book. Okay, so you'll need six of these from any kind of paper you'd like. Then you're also going to need two pieces that are six by six for the front inside cover and the back inside cover. So we've got your six, six by 12 pages, front cover and the back cover are six by six. This piece is four and a fourth by six. The spine is five by six and four and a fourth by six. Okay, were you able to get all that down? The last thing you'll need is one little piece that you can't even really see in my finished book, but this is just a piece of chipboard that I've added some adhesive to. And when we go to put our spine on, I'm going to put that on just like this because it will really reinforce that spine and it really needs it. I created one of my books without it and this piece of paper just kind of fell apart after a while, after a lot of use. So you'll definitely need a little spine piece. All right, so that's part one of this little book. So be watching for part two and we'll start putting everything together.